again, this is Laura Alford. Uh, this video is going to be uh, some examples on calculating the free surface corrections. So if you recall, we talked a little bit about free surface correction before, but it's a little bit interesting concept and I thought some examples might help. So going back a couple of lectures, uh, the free surface effect is what happens when a liquid is sloshing around inside a tank on a ship. Uh, the liquid itself has some inertia to it on the surface and this tank inertia is going to effectively decrease your ship's GM. Here's what I mean. So GM, if you remember, is the, the measure of initial stability for our ship. And then GZ is the riding arm. Right? If you put liquid inside a tank on this ship and you tip the ship over, all the liquid is going to slosh over to one side. And that's going to change where the center of gravity is, as shown here. If you draw a line from the new center of gravity up to where it hits the, inter the centered line, that point we call G double prime. And then the distance between the original center of gravity, G, and G double prime, we call the virtual shift of the center of gravity, otherwise known as the free surface correction. So then we now have G double prime to M, which is the corrected GM. And this corrected GM is the true measure of the, the initial stability of your ship. So you can see here, right, if you've got a big wide tank, that uh, the free surface correction can be significant, and therefore it can significantly reduce your GM. Okay. So to calculate the free surface correction, we just need to calculate the distance of, from G to G double prime. Um, to do that, it, is, it equals the density of the fluid in the tank times gravity times the moment of inertia of the free surface of the tank, and then divide all that by the weight of the ship. Right. So here's an example. We have a tank. It's a wide tank going across the ship placed here. Um, inside the tank is some seawater ballast, so the density of the fluid uh, is just seawater. So it's, uh, I'm going to use 1027 kilograms per meters cubed here. Um, the length of the tank is 4 meters, and the beam is 10 meters. The weight of the ship is shown here. So we're saying, what's the free surface correction for this tank? Okay. Because the tank is rectangular, the moment of inertia of the surface of the fluid is equal to the length times the beam cubed of the tank divided by 12. So we plug in our numbers and we get 333 meters to the fourth. Um, then take that, plug in the numbers that we've got for density, gravity, the moment of inertia, and weight, and div uh, divide by weight, I should say, and then we get the free surface correction is 2.12 meters. This could be significant depending on what your original GM was, uh, but it's so this, this is the effect of a wide tank here. Now if you take that same tank and you turn it so that now it's a narrow tank compared to the, how the orientation in the ship, let's take the same thing. Um, the seawater ballast again, weight of the, shape has, the weight, weight of the ship has not changed. The length, but the length of the tank now is 10 meters and the beam is only four meters. We're going to see what this means in terms of the free surface correction. So we're going to use the same equation, length times beam cubed divided by 12. But remember, now we've got the numbers are reversed. So the length is now 10 meters, and the beam is 4 meters. So now the moment of inertia is only 53 meters uh, to the fourth. So plug all that in, and now the free surface correction is only 0 0.34 meters. So this sort of would indicate that maybe narrower tanks is better to have in terms of minimizing the effect on stability of these slack tanks. Okay. So going along with that then, so what if you have two tanks? So narrow is good, so if we take a, a big wide tank and we divide it into two, right? We're going to do the same thing, right? Ship tips over, liquid sloshes over to the side, but because we've got this bulkhead thing here dividing it up, now we've got two narrow tanks. So we say, what is the uh, free surface correction for this setup here? Right. We're going to do similar to what we had. I'm using the same tanks, so they're, uh, but they're going to be in, oriented in that, the narrow fashion. So the length is 10 meters. Um, the beam of each of them is 4 meters. Weight of the ship is the same, still using uh, seawater ballast. But now we want to know what is the total free surface correction for these tanks. Right. To do this, you, just, you, you calculate the free surface correction for each tank individually, and then you just add them up, right? So these are the same tanks we did before, so the moment of inertia is 53 meters to the fourth, and then the free surface correction is 0 0.34. And then to do the total, you just add all those up. So now the total free surface correction is 0 0.68 meters. Um, so that's an example. Um, again, these are pretty easy numbers to calculate because we're assuming uh, rectangular tanks here. Um, you will get... 
um, there'd be a table of this kind of stuff for if a ship for if you're working on it. So if you were told I need the free surface correction for all of these tanks, all you got to do is just go up and look up each individual tank for however full it is, and then you just add them up at the end. But you can see that if you've got a bunch of tanks, they can add up in a hurry. So you really need to make sure that you watch that um, compare the free total free free surface correction that you get to see you know compare it to how is your not corrected GM because that's what you're going to use to be the new measure of initial stability for your ship. So anyways, hope these help, and as always, thanks for watching.